Welcome, friends. Welcome back to the kitchen. Uh, Jamie is back in the kitchen with us today. Jamie is a butcher, author, educator, um, and you work with Westside Beef, and they provided us with a half a hog. They did. And so today we're just going to concentrate on the head. Something that a lot of people don't think of when they think of, of pig, but I know that there's a lot of really good stuff inside here. You're right, and uh, I would say for any of the squeamish viewers, this may not be the episode for them. Uh, maybe, but I think you should watch it. I think you should watch it. I think you should know what's going on anyway. Oh, yeah, for sure, 100%. There's, uh, because there is so much going on with the head and should not be forgotten because uh, I can count, just even looking at it, like three immediate things come to mind that this can be used for, and we'll explore all three. Okay, so where do we start? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the ear off. Okay. And I just kind of come as close as I can to where it's actually attached to the head. So I'll just come through like so, and I've got an ear. Um, absolutely fantastic braised in a sandwich. Yeah, and then I've seen like a lot of people taking it to the terrine mold as well too, yeah. right? Yeah. So, I mean, it just the dramatic effect, but the, the bite of the uh, cartilage is quite nice as well too. Filled with gelatin, great for... Um, stocks as well. Mm -hmm. I, I would put it in a stock to give it that sort of thick, unctuous feeling to a stock. Nice. Great. Okay, so. Put the ear aside. Now we're going to be focusing on the jowl to take the jowl off. Okay. And right where I took the ear off, I'm looking for, there's a bit of a crease under there, and then I follow this crease right so there's, here. So there's a crease right across the face of the, of, the, of the hog. That's right. So you just follow that. Yep. Okay. So, and then what I'll do is I'll have a little bit of bone resistance right here. That's going to be where the actual cheek is. And that's going to come with me. So that cheek is actually kind of resting on a flat bone. And then after I've got the cheek off, so like first and foremost, like we can't really do too much with it at this state. Um, we'll notice that there's a lot of glands in here mm -hmm. and a little bit of residual blood. So what I like to do is I'll go right down to the meat and then through those glands right till I find the meat and I'll go right down and cut away all those glands. So the glands are, are waste. You they're extremely bitter and you don't want to eat them? Is that the idea? Yeah, I don't know. I think it's one of those things where if I know they're there, then I want them gone. Yeah. Um, but I've seen them in like people who have made different guanciales and stuff. Like You can you notice them after you've seen them a while that people will leave them on there. So they are edible. Um, it's just one of those things that I don't want to eat them. Well, when I make sausages, I always remove them. Yeah, same here. Um, any type of veins that I know that are in parts of the animal, I like to remove those too. Excellent. So this is the pork cheek jowl. Yep. Excellent for guanciale, which is a bacon adjacent type thing. It's a, it's a, yeah. what would you call it? Yeah, I would uh, absolutely call it. Um, it's close to uh, like a pancetta uh, or even a prosciutto, something that's just been cured and left to hang and further dry out um, dried, without the smoke. Dried but not smoked. That's yeah. right. So it's, yep. it's, it's salt cured but not smoked. Mm -hmm. And Guanciale was the first bacon that they were using in uh, uh, Carbonara. Yeah. And then obviously this compared to a belly. So now we're finding more people just kind of switching to belly. Excellent. Yeah. So that's, that's the head. So what's left here mm -hmm. um, is great for Head, head cheese. cheese, yeah, for sure. So whatever meat is left on here, and there is actually quite a bit of it. Um, we probably could have been a little bit more thorough and just dug out the rest of that cheek, but you know what? Uh, the guanciale's loss is the head cheese's gain. Okay. So yeah, just slowly simmered uh, for hours, let it cool, and then take out. You can literally get in there with your hands and pull just, out just all pull the usable meat. Yeah, yeah, and then you make your head cheese. And there's other parts that we can actually add into it as well too, like we can add in a hawk, we can add in a trotter, and pull the meat off of that too. And uh, yeah, there's just Honestly, there's a use for everything Whole on this hog. animal. Exactly. Yeah. Whole hog. So that is breaking down the head of the hog. Um, we're going to make guanciale. Definitely going to make guanciale. Mm -hmm. um, head cheese. I really like eating head cheese, but I've never tackled making it. Um, it is time consuming. There's no lie uh, there. It can certainly be time consuming, but I think that the reward is certainly there because like the end result, as I'm sure you've had it, as you already said, so it's just like a good head cheese is, is quite special. Cool. So we're gonna move on to the next primal, which is the shoulder. Um, come on back for that one. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.